Good evening and welcome. Can I just remind our members that under the Council's current procedures, this meeting will be recorded and uploaded at a later date to the Council's website. And I also ask all members, except for cabinet members and group leaders, that your mics and cameras be turned off until you're invited to speak by myself. Should you wish to speak, would you please indicate on the chat or question function on your screen? However, if you're using a telephone, please indicate verbally when appropriate if you wish to speak. With regards to voting on recommendations, if there's no dissent to the recommendation, I will accept silence as an agreement. Should a vote, however, be required, it is my intention that all members be asked individually for their vote. During the meeting, if you have any technical difficulties, please let the Democratic Services Officer know as soon as possible. That will start the meeting. Any apologies for absence? None received. Councillor yeah. Andrew R. T. Davis. Thank you. Any other apologies for absence? No. Well, we're going to hear the roll call of members. Okay, good evening, everybody. Councillor Julie Aviat. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Vincent Bailey. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Rhiannon Birch. I can see Councillor Birch. That's fine. Councillor Jonathan Bird. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Bronwyn Brooks. <clears throat> Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Liz Burnett. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor George Carroll. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Christine Cave. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Janice Charles. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Millie Collins. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Jeff Cox. <laughs> okay, he's Councillor Cox is trying to get in at the moment. Councillor Robert Crowley. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Pamela Drake. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Vince Driscoll. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Stuart Edwards. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Ben Gray. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor uh, Owen, Owen Griffiths. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Stephen Griffiths. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Tony Hampton. Is Councillor Hampton with us tonight? I think Councillor Hampton is with us tonight, but I think they're having technical difficulties. Okay, I'll come back. Councillor Sally Hanks. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Nick Hodges. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Hunter Jarvie. <laughs> Councillor Hunter Jarvie? No. Present, nothing to declare. There we are, got that. Councillor Gwyn John? 
Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Ian Johnson. Present all, I didn't be to that again. Councillor Gordon Kemp. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Peter King. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Kevin Marney. Councillor Marnie with us this evening. He has commented uh, in the chat. I think he was struggling with sound, so maybe he's also struggling with audio, but that's just I, from I, seeing the chat. I'm back. I'm back now. I just managed to get on. It's shaping up for another shambles there. Rob, we just about got away with it. I am present, and I do have nothing to declare. Councillor Catherine McCaffer. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Anne Moore. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Neil Moore. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Michael Morgan. Councillor Morgan. Is Councillor Morgan with us this evening? No. Okay. Councillor Jane Norman. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Rachel Nugent Finn. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Andrew Parker. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Bob Penrose. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Sandra Perks. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Andrew Robertson. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Leighton Rowlands. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Ruba Sivanianam. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor John Thomas. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Neil yeah. Thomas. Present, nothing to declare. Councillor Stefan William. Yeah. Councillor William on the line. No. no. Okay. Councillor Margaret Wilkinson. I see Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Eddie Williams. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Mark Wilson. Present and nothing to declare. Councillor Margarita Wright. Councillor Wright can hear, but she can't respond back. So if someone from Democratic can help Councillor Wright and help Councillor Hamden, that would be appreciated. Okay, I'll just go back through a couple of names. Councillor Jeff Cox, first of all. Councillor Cox on the line now. No, okay. And then we have um, Councillor Tony Hampton is trying to get in. Is Councillor Hampton on the on the line? No, okay. And Councillor Michael Morgan. No, okay. And finally, Councillor Wright. Has Councillor Wright joined the meeting now? No, okay. That completes well, the roll I've call. Just, I've just had a text message from Stephen Williams saying he's having trouble getting into the site. So okay. uh, hopefully he'll join us soon. I've told him to bring Democratic. Thank you very much. That completes the roll call. Thank you. Uh, we move on now to item three, the approval of the minutes. Could I have approval of the minutes held on the 26th of February, please? Can I move the minutes, please, Madam Mayor? And can I formally second, Madam Mayor? Madam Mayor, can I make a correction, please? Yes. Um, on page uh, 1358, 
which is the questions from councillors. There are comments attributed to Councillor Bailey, um, which are uh, rightfully my comments as they are supplementary to my question. We'll have those changed, please. Thank you very much. Can we have the Minister approve the subject, subject to the amendment of that? Can I, can I move it as amended? Yeah. And second as amended. Thank you. I'll move on that. Any objections? No? Well, we take that as read then, please. And for the special meeting on the 9th of March. Can I move the minutes, Madam Mayor? Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Anyone else? No, thank you. Well, we take that as passed. Thank you. Now we move now to item four. Um, uh, we'll receive announcements from the mayor. Uh, my first official engagement after becoming mayor was last uh, Sunday, yesterday. I was fortunate enough to be able to uh, lay a wreath at the cenotaph in Barry for uh, to for the remembrance of um, Battle of Britain. This is a very small affair, as you can imagine, because of social distancing, but uh, a number of councillors did manage to turn out and we did lay the wreaths. Well worth the effort. Thank you. That's all the announcements I have. Um, do we have any announcements from, from the uh, cabinet? Yes. yes, please, Madam Mayor, if I could. It's not a very good announcement, but it's an announcement which I think needs to be said. It can't people people can't have escaped people that COVID-19 has not gone away, and that it seems to be exacerbating, and not only uh, in, in 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 other areas around Wales, but also close to home. So can I give you some information, please? The number of confirmed cases of COVID-19 in available Morgan is continuing to rise. The number of cases had doubled in the space of five days. The latest figures show the rate of infection for the Vale was 22.5 per thousand on the 18th of December. What we expect by tomorrow is that rate could be over 30. And if you bear in mind that people are on holiday and come from, from uh, countries which have a rate of 20 per 100,000, you can see that we are starting to rise and, and, and be the same as other people. We would like, we, I would like to have the R rate to give you, but unfortunately I can't give you that. It normally comes out late and there's one coming out tomorrow, but I can tell you that on the 6th of September, it was 1.6 for the veil. So I, sus I suspect it will be much higher tomorrow. As you also know, lo local lockdowns are in currently in place in Caerphilly and Rondekun and Tark. And today, it's been announced that the same restrictions will come into effect tomorrow for those living in Blaine and Gwent, Regent, Merthyr, Tidville and Newport. So in, es in essence, all those areas around Cardiff and Vale, UHB, are in lockdown. My message for residents of the Vale is a simple one. This is our last chance to prevent similar measures being imposed on our towns and villages. Slowing the spread of the virus is not difficult, but it does require us all to work together and follow the same basic guidelines. Wear a mask when indoors in public places. Always obscure, ob sorry, always observe social distancing of two meters. Wash your hands regularly. If you meet another household outside your extended household, stay outdoors. Work from home if you can. Stay at home if you or anyone in your extended household has symptoms. If you have symptoms, please get a test. I know that's not easy, but you have to persevere. I know the, last, the vast majority of uh, Vail residents want to do the right thing. Earlier this year, we all made great sacrifices to stop the spread of COVID-19 and protect our families, friends, and the most vulnerable in our communities. We have made a huge progress back towards a return to life as we once knew it in the months since. Some people call it the new normal. I hope we can get to past that. But 
we must now, now not undo all this hard work. We've taken the sacrifices, people have relaxed, and it's time to take those sacrifices again. The Railgun Morgan Council will be doing everything it can to share this message as widely as possible. Our teams will also be working hard, as they have been since the outbreak of the pandemic, to make our public spaces as safe as possible. And those businesses with the responsibility to do the same are, 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 are following the guidelines. I'd like to thank all residents in advance for continuing to work with us. Together, we can keep the veil safe and our communities open, but it does mean that we all have to work together, follow the rules, mm -hmm. stay safe, but keep other people. Thank you, Madam Mayor. A, st a, stern, a stern warning, but unfortunately, it has crept up again. We can't complete it. Thank you, Leader, for that most um, unnerving in some way, but serious message that we need to get across for everyone. Thank you. Any other announcements? No. Um, can we move on then to item five, please? A report from the monitoring officer. Yes, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> um, as you know, because of COVID-19, we've had um, a situation whereby members couldn't attend some, some uh, meetings. And um, Section 85, one of the Local Government Act, does provide for some exceptions because Normally, the normal rule, the six-month rule, as we all know it by, is if you don't attend a meeting for six months, then you can be disqualified as a council. There are exemptions um, if a member fails to attend his local authority throughout that period of six months. Um, the, it depends on what the reason for failure to attend is, and if it's approved then by the council, then I can go forward. Basically, what's happened in, in case of this is you have to be for six months, you have to attend for six months, otherwise you lose your, your position, or it, it can, prior to the first six months, have dispensation from the council. In this case, because of the COVID-19, this was also added as an exceptional rule, and uh, the regulations that were applied by Welsh Government in respect to the Vale Morgan Council, or all councils, period of 22nd of April to the of July. And in, for, that was for most members, for, for cabinet members, it was on 13th of July. There was some, there was some, there was some standing, and the letter was issued. And the letter was issued. I'm getting feedback. I don't know why. Um, I, I, I don't think that's me, but I think somebody's got the mic on. In line, in line with the delegate authority granted by the council, uh, the, the managing director also did issue some emergency decisions of the council on behalf of the council, and that lasted on the 4th of July. So basically, what happened was that we had a period from the 20, from, from 22nd of April to July when it was covered by the regulations. The, delegate, the managing director issued some emergency powers to, to continue that. It's, it's now recommended that this is reinstatement of the um, of, of the time scale with effect from today. If this if this is agreed by council, then basically what it means is that the clock starts ticking now. The six month rule dispensation has ceased, and as a result, um, we will then start the six month rule. But just for you to know, from the 22nd of April to the 20th of September that is not an accountable period so basically if we agree this tonight it will start from tonight and therefore all those present today are already have their their attendance marked as being here so everybody who is present tonight has six months in order to uh, meet the rules um the the, re the recommendations are that the council agrees to the cessation of the managing director's emergency powers, which was reference emergency power COVID-19, number 84, dated the 4th of July, with immediate effect. The council notes that in line with the provisions of Regulation 10 of the Local Authority's Coronavirus Meetings Wales Regulations 2020, that the period 20, 22nd of April 2020 to 3rd of April 2020 and 30th of July 2020 cabinet members 
is disregarded when calculating the six months rule for the purpose of section 851 of the local government act 1972 in respect of the available Morgan councillors. Three, that the council notes that appeared from the 4th of July 20 to the 22, 4th of July 2020 to 20th of September 2020 is disregarded when the calculating six months rule for the purposes of section 85 one of the local government act 1972 with respect to the available Morgan councillors. Can I formally move those recommendations, please? So it means from now on, all those people present will have six months before any any uh, sanction could come in in the case. Could I formally second, please, Madam Mayor? Right. If there's if there's um, no um, dissent on this recommendation, the recommendation will be passed. I take that as passed. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just checked if it wasn't another mic in the but I don't think it is. Okay. So is that agreed? It is? It's been passed, agreed. Thank you. There's a terrible feedback. Um, item item um, 6A is the capital monitoring report the first, first of April 2020. Can I, just, can I just stop for a second, please? I apologize to council. I just took uh, the other mic, disconnected the other mic, so it isn't in this. Okay, um, item 6A, capital monitoring for the period 1st of April 2020 to 31st of July 2020. Basically, the report went to cabinet <clears throat> on the 7th of September. Uh, the report. Uh, the Thank you. Perhaps somebody's making a walk. The report outlines a position with regard to the capital programme for the period 1st of April to 31st of July 2020, taking into account the impact of the pandemic on the ability of the council to deliver its full programme. The delivery of the capital programme will be challenging this year due to the pandemic. Early in April, it was agreed that the council would not tender for capital schemes due to concerns regarding the availability of contractors. This is dreadful. The reliability of their supply chains and their ability to meet the agreed timescales. The position was subsequently reviewed and services are now tendered for works to be completed. This has enabled works to be successfully completed on school buildings over the summer period. The report details our current position with regard to the capital program and includes additions to the pro program for the following reasons. Slippages of 13 million pounds from 2019 to 2020, and they're included in the appendix one to the report that went on the 7th of, uh, of September. Additions to the programme followed the receipt of the Welsh Government grants and additionals to the programme through the use of section 106 money. The pandemic has had an effect on the programme and particularly in the housing service. It's been reported that some works will have to be delayed until 21-22. But basically the appendix of the report contains all of the programme. When it went to Cabinet, there were uh, five recommendations, recommendation one, two, and three, and five, uh, one, two, and three are, 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 are either use of delegated authority or use of emergency powers. Basically, it's coming here for the fourth recommendation, because the cabinet is recommending that to, to the managing director and the head of finance, sorry, the council will recommend that the managing director and the head of finance in consultation with the cabinet member performance and resources is given delegated authority to make additions, deletions or transfers to or from the capital program in relation to the capital economic regeneration reserve. I'm sorry this is giving me a headache. Um, I, basically the report went to cabinet, went to cabinet and it has to come here to get delegated authority for particular points. 
Can I can I formally move? Can I formally second, please? Any other comments? I take that as an agreement. Thank you. So moved. Thank you much, very much. I don't know what's happened. It seems to have gone away a little bit. Um, this next item is the Local Democracy and Boundary Commission for Wales to review the electoral arrangements for the County Borough of the Vale. Good morning, I think. Uh, Councillor Eddie Williams is in this case. Thank you, Leader. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, yes, the, the report went to Cabinet on the 7th of September and outlined the Commission's um, requirements for um, change of electors and representation within various wards around the county. Um, it also goes into the number of members of council for the area, uh, types of boundaries that we'll deal with, um, numbers of members to be elected for particular wards and also um, changes of any names. Um, the council has discussed this over a period um, the actual review commenced in 8th of November, sorry, 8th of May 2019, and the Council provided comments to the Commission's proposals as part of stage one of the review by uh, 30 July 2019. As part of stage two of the review, the Commission had published that proposal report, and these were attached to the reports um, given to Cabinet. And the um, views were sought on the proposed lateral arrangements. And these have to be in by the 20th of October 2020. And the report outlined um, considerations were set out in paragraphs 2, 4, and 2, 7, and 8 of the report. And it was recognised um, that uh, Council Johnson um, had uh, an objection to um, some of the representation. The, um, we'll give Council Johnson an opportunity to. Um, speak on his own behalf regarding that. Uh, it's, it's important to note that there are other wards that uh, have got under um, representation. Cottrell's ward um, is to continue with two councillors. Um, in 2019, um, the 18%. Uh, in 2024, it's going to be 20%. Um, and Dins Powers is 12% and 17% respectively. It's interesting that um, the Commission have increased the number of councillors from 47 to 53, whereas initially it was 51. Um, but the Commission's mind that this will improve the ratio of electors. The recommendations on the report were that um, it was resolved for the Cabinet that um, the Council recommend to the Council that the Local Democracy and Bank Commission propose for the Vale of the Council electoral arrangements as detailed in February 2020 draft proposal report be accepted, save for some changes relating to Cornerswell and Landau electoral wards, which we itemised in paragraph 27. And then also in advance of the Council meeting on 21st September 2020 tonight, the electoral uh, registration officer's recommendation for the names of proposed Lateral wards is detailed in paragraph 28 of the report. He circulates the members for their comments, subject to any amendments made by cabinet. On that point, I just have had no uh, returns or comments by councillors regarding the names of the particular wards, particularly as it includes Welsh names as well. Um, I, um, part three was the report, together with the cabinet's comments and special resolution to above. We refer to the Council for Consideration for tonight, 21st September 2020. And as a part of that, um, part four was the, the urgent decision procedure, paragraph 14, 14, 2, subsection 2. The Council of Constitution refers be applied to this report. Hence, it wasn't possible with the time scales and uh, to, um, to bring the report to scrutiny. So, there's, that's the, um, the recommendations of this. Um, I move the report, but uh, I give it to Madam Chair for uh, discussion on the council on the word. Councillor Johnson is wish to place on the Formally second, Madam Mayor. Thank you for that. Uh, before we proceed, uh, I'd like to call in the director to, who was just trying to make, uh, make sure that other members that weren't able to get on to listen to the debate and to vote on the debate. 
is to make sure that they are available. Yes, thank, thank you. Uh, I just want to check if Councillor Cox is now on the in the meeting. Confirmed. Uh, thank you, Councillor Cox. Councillor Hampton as well. Present. Nothing to declare. Thank you, Councillor Hampton. Councillor Morgan. No, still no Councillor Morgan and Councillor Wright. Yes, present. Excellent. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much for that. And um, we have a number of people who wish to speak on this topic. Uh, could I call upon Councillor Ian Johnson first, please? Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Uh, thank you, Councillor Willis, for introducing um, the uh, the report. I hope that everybody can hear me um, tonight. I'm aware there's some feedback issues that um, some people are having. Um, uh, this is obviously uh, something which is of is important, but it does pale into insignificance compared with some of the issues that are being faced at the moment. Uh, nevertheless, the fact that the local boundary commission have decided to restart the consultation at this time means that we need to uh, provide a response, and I'm sure that all councillors with an interest uh, will do so. Um, prior to the uh, to the um, the crisis beginning, um, myself, I think Councillor Williams and Councillor Moore met with the uh, with the boundary commission in the in the civic offices um, to discuss their their findings uh, and, and their suggestions. Um, I think it, broadly, uh, I agreed with the original suggestions put forward by this council uh, last year. Uh, I want to specifically refer to the situation of Dennis Powys tonight. Uh, which was proposed by this council last year as uh, something that should retain uh, four members, um, but that the uh, but that the boundary commission has determined should only have three. Uh, I say that um, uh, having written to the cabinet ahead of the meeting a fortnight ago um, to uh, to express my concerns uh, about uh, the cabinet uh, recommending to council that we agree that reduction. Uh, I therefore like to make uh, an amendment tonight that we, as a council, um, recommend that the Boundary Commission has four uh, councillors representing Dennis Powys rather than three, as they propose. Uh, I believe Councillor Hodges will be seconding that uh, on the telephone line in a moment. I say that uh, in the context of a, what is, in our own figures, a 21% increase uh, in the population in, in Dennis Powys. Um, that does not seem commensurate with a reduction in uh, elected members. That doesn't make sense. Um, the boundaries uh, for in which, uh, in terms of population, that are used um, by the local boundary commission are to be 25% to be to have, not have uh, wards, in which there's a representation, over representation or under representation of 25%. Um, if we look to the looking forward, which is now. Uh, where I think we should be looking then in 2024, um, the uh, members in Dennis Powys would be 1,839 voters, which would be a 12% over representation, as opposed to 2,452 uh, electors, which would be a 17% under representation. There would only be one ward in the whole Vale, which would have a greater under representation. Ironically, that would be my own ward in Buttrells. Uh, whereas there would be, if were four members, there would be four wards um, with a greater uh, under greater over representation, and according to our recommendations tonight, a fifth one in Sandok. Uh, I therefore think that it makes sense from a representation perspective uh, for Dennis Powers to maintain its four members, uh, as was uh, as was proposed by this council in its initial recommendations last year. Uh, and so I would move that. I am aware, and it could be um, suggested that there is, a, by having an additional member, that does change the dynamics slightly in any case, because the other numbers would need to be um, changed. Uh, I don't wish to go into that. Indeed, we're not the decision makers here. However, if people do want to make that argument, then I point to the creation of a, several um, wards uh, in the Western Vale with substantially greater uh, over representation. Uh, which is, I believe, in my belief, unnecessary. Uh, I'll be making that point in my own um, contribution to the Local Boundary Commission rather than making it a part of the recommendation here. However, anybody who wishes to argue that the additional member throws everything uh, into chaos, 
uh, would want to consider whether those changes we made to the Boundary Commission are therefore relevant. Uh, on that note, Madam Mayor, uh, I, I move my recommendation that we have that the, this Council uh, supports there being four uh, members representing the Guinness Powers Electoral Ward rather than three. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Do we have a, we have a seconder for that? Uh, Madam Mayor, Nick Hodge is on the phone. I will, form, I will formally second that. Thank you, Councillor Hodges. Um, I, we, we now need to vote on the amendment as proposed by... I believe I've already seconded it. I believe I've already seconded that uh, motion by uh, Councillor Johnson. Councillor Robertson. No, Councillor Hodges seconded it. Councillor Hodges actually seconded the uh, proposal. I believe Councillor uh, Robertson seconded it in the chat, Madam Mayor. Can we, assume any other so can we have any other comments on the amendment, please? Councillor Williams. Um, Councillor, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I just need to emphasise that the Council did, in its um, previous um, replies to the Commission, ask for the four members. So um, they've replied on this and they've returned that as a no. They haven't agreed to it. So um, I, I don't see any value in asking the again for the, the amendment, but I just need to raise that up that, uh, so the count, count members are aware. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Uh, we have um, Councillor Stuart Griffiths wishes to speak next. Hi there. Thank you, Miss Mayor. Um, just to say that um, I fully back um, Ian's uh, proposal for the amendment, and I'm sure um, many in, on this meeting do as well. Just to make that clear. Thank you. Thank you for that. Um, Councillor Kemp, do you wish to make a comment? Not on this, Madam Mayor. I wish to speak on a separate matter relating to the Roos Ward. Thank you very much. Councillor Cave, do you wish to speak? Yes, Madam Mayor, but I wish to speak on a separate matter uh, related to uh, the land value in ward. Thank you very much for that. Uh, so, Councillor Bailey, would you like to come in now? Thank you, Madam Mayor. It's just a point of clar clarification. Just if, if two of our members are proposing separate amendments to the overall uh, proposal, how does that affect the order in which we take the votes? Because I believe that they want to propose counter uh, proposals on two wards. Two Councillor Cave, we will deal with the first amendment as proposed by Councillor Ian Johnson. Uh, I'm afraid the leader needs, wants to come in to speak. Uh, Councillor Moore? I was, I don't know if you can hear me, because I was, un, I was, un, I was, un, I was muted. Um, I was just going to raise the same thing on the basis that that uh, are we having separate debates on different areas? Because I think if you're going to do that, probably the only way to do it. So can I? Can, I don't know how many how many there's going to be. That's all. I just want the clarification. To be honest. Just two from our group, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Bailey. Do you like to proceed? It'll be Councillor Kemp, I presume, first, and Christine Cave separately. Right, so this is on a different topic to... They've <laughs> already topic. said they wish to speak on a different topic to what the amendment. It's different. To, they don't want to speak on Ian Johnson's amendment relating to Dennis Palace, but they want to speak on two other ward areas before we vote and therefore accept it on... On whole. That's why I was seeking a point of clarification as to which order in which we speak on these separate ward issues, if you get where I'm coming from. Well, we need to vote on the amendment as proposed by Councillor Johnson to start with. You can take further uh, votes, uh, take further information after that. 
So can we have a voting please on Councillor Johnson's amendment? We will be doing a recorded vote on the amendment as uh, requested by Councillor Ian Johnson. And yeah, just um, to clarify, it it won't be a recorded vote, but I'll just run through the roll call to um, see um, how so we can we can actually vote properly, and I can get the numbers. So um, if uh, when I call um, your name, if you say that you are for the amendment or against the amendment, please. So can first, we have uh, a recorded vote, please, uh, Mark. It, we need we need six to request a recorded vote. I would also be Rogers. I, I, I would like, like to vote. Like a recorded vote. I would like a recorded vote. Amy. Amy. That's six. Okay. We are literally Pardon. being recorded tonight. It makes no sense not to have a recorded vote when we are being recorded. It's a matter for the minutes, though, okay. Councillor Johnson. So I will um, I will go through this as a recorded vote. And as I say, when I call your name, if you say you're for the amendment or against the amendment. So first, Councillor Aviat. Against the amendment. Councillor Bailey. Uh, for the amendment. Councillor Birch. Against. Councillor Bird. Against the amendment. Councillor Brooks. Against the amendment. Councillor Burnett. Against the amendment. Councillor Carroll. Or. Councillor Cave. Or. Councillor Charles. For the amendment. Councillor Millie Collins. Oh. Councillor Cox. Against the amendment. Councillor Crowley. For the amendment. Councillor Drake. Against the amendment. Councillor Driscoll. For the amendment. Councillor Edwards. For the amendment. Councillor Gray. Against the amendment. Councillor Griffiths, Owen Griffiths, I should say. Against the amendment. Councillor Stephen Griffiths. And for the amendment, thanks. Councillor Hampton. For the amendment. Councillor Hanks. Against the amendment. Councillor Hodges. For democracy, uh, for the amendment. <laughs> Councillor Jarvey. Okay. Against the amendment. Councillor John. Councillor John, can you hear me? I can see you. Against the amendment. Thank you. Councillor Johnson. Obliged, Gwethiant. Councillor Kemp. For the amendment. Councillor King. Against the amendment. Councillor Marnie. I've got to stop the whole thing here. You've totally and utterly ignored what was agreed if you want to speak. I've been stopped from speaking. I've carried out the exact request on the panel and not being called to speak. I can't hear anything. As I pointed out, Neil Moore's sounding like a very poor Norman Collier. Eddie Williams is no better. Can I can I barely uh, just have your vote, please, Councillor Marnie. No, no. no, you can't. How dare you? How can anybody vote if they can't hear what's going on in bits and fits and spats? I mean, I, I, I gathered a little bit of predictably Ian Johnson wanting more politicians yet again uh, to increase the number of politicians, but that's about it. In the yeah. Councillor Marnie, I'm can you give your vote, please? No. Can you please give your vote, Councillor Marnie? You will have, you will have, have chance to speak. 
You will have a chance to speak after this vote has been taken. No, I when put in to have to speak beforehand, to speak well. and you've denied me that, and I can't hear what's going on anyway. How can you possibly take votes off people who haven't heard the whole conversation? Councillor Marnie, you this, is your last opportunity. this is your last no. opportunity to vote on this matter. You'll be given a chance to speak afterwards. Now, please, can you vote on the motion, please? I will not vote on something that I cannot hear being laid out. How can, how can you ask me to do that? Councillor Marnie, can you please leave the meeting? Thank you. <laughs> well, right. I'm not really at the meeting, am I? To be fair. Can you leave the, can you please leave the meeting? <laughs> no. no, I can't leave either, the meeting. Either leave the meeting or be quiet. I, I'm sorry, I'm not putting up with this. You either leave the meeting. Because you're not running the meeting properly. That's you the leave point. The the meeting, the please. No. Madam Mayor, can I have some clarification in relation to uh, uh, members leaving the meeting as requested by the Mayor, please, and the monitoring officer? As uh, Councillor Aiton Rowlands is aware, obviously the decision of the chairman is final in these matters. And I think on this um, matter, because it was interrupting the vote taking, uh, the chair, the, the mayor has decided for the duration of the vote taking that um, Councillor Marnie um, leaves the meeting, albeit um, he could re re rejoin the meeting after the vote. Thank you for that. Uh, can we carry on with the vote taking, please? Okay, Councillor McCaffer. Against the amendment. Councillor Moore, Anne Moore. Against the amendment. Can you switch your mic? Thank you. Councillor Neil Moore. Against the amendment. Councillor Morgan, I believe Mark, Councillor Morgan's on the phone now. Yes, yes I am. I, uh, against the amendment. Councillor Norman. Against. Councillor Nugent Finn. For the amendment. Councillor Parker. Again, uh, sorry, against the amendment. Councillor Penrose. Against the amendment. Councillor Perks. Against the amendment. Councillor Robertson. For the amendment. Councillor Rowlands. For the amendment. Councillor Sivaniana. Against the amendment. Councillor Thomas. John Thomas. Against sorry. Councillor Neil Against. Thomas. Against the amendment. Uh, I don't know if Councillor Stefan William is on the meeting now. Uh, yes, I am. Uh, yeah. Um, and I'm in favour. Oblige. Thank you, Dioch. Councillor yeah. Wilkinson. Councillor Wilkinson, I think it might be on mute. Okay, I'll come back to Councillor Wilkinson. Councillor Williams. Sorry, uh... Against. Councillor Wilson. Councillor Mark Wilson. I'll come back, Councillor Wright. For the amendment. Okay, Councillor Wilson. No, oh, Councillor Wilkinson. I can see you, Councillor Wilkinson. Do you want to give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Against. Okay, thank you. 
Okay, that's 26 against and 18 for. So that amendment fails. 18. Right, uh, that, uh, that is 18 members, 18 votes for, against the motion and, no, sorry. 18 for the amendment. 18 for the amendment. 26 and 26 against, therefore the amendment falls. Any other further amendments before we go on? No? I take there's a, a few other... There, there, other there are two. We've said before there are two amendments, Madam Mayor. And the second amendment being? Um, I was going to invite the... Uh, Councillor Kemp and Councillor Cave to speak now on the amendments they were proposing. Are you inviting myself, Councillor Kemp, or Councillor Cave first? I was going to say, uh, Councillor Kemp, I think, was the first to ring in. So uh, make his, um, put his name down. So it's Councillor Kemp. First. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the proposal I have to make is in respect of the proposals in respect of the Roos Ward and the new ward known as St Nicholas and Clancarven. I Can I say firstly that I'd like to um, welcome the long overdue recognition that Roos Ward has been grossly unrepresented for a number of years now. I think it's important to look at this both <coughs> from the numbers involved but also from the issue of community connections between various parts of the ward. And I am very concerned at the proposal to remove Clan Carven from the Roots Ward. I, as far as I am aware, Clan Carven has been part of the Roots Ward since at least 1974. So we're now some 46 years that it's been joined. And I would be very disappointed to see that connection broken. We have to bear in mind that um, even though I was against it, and as some of some other members, there is a the, the, of the, what was a proposal and is now a decision that Clancarven School is actually going to be moved into Roos. It would seem very strange to me to have Clancarven Ward removed, uh, Clancarven, the Clancarven Ward removed from the Roos Ward where its school will be in the Roos, or in the Roos Ward itself. So that is very, very strange. I don't want to um, propose that we increase the numbers of councillors over what is proposed in the Boundary Commission's report. So I'm sure Councillor Party will be pleased to do that. What I am going to propose is that as well as retaining Frank Carvin in the Roots Ward, the Ward of Bolverson and St. Nicholas be added to it. Now, again, my understanding that historically Bombleston was in the Roos Ward until I think the 1980s. It's going back before my time on the council, um, but that is my understanding that Bombleston formed part of it. And I propose that Bombleston St. Nicholas now be added back into the Plank Carven Ward. I don't think there's any particular connection between um, St George's with the Roos Ward or even with Clancarven. So I propose that that remains in the Peterston Ward. And if we then look at the figures, it would, on the 2019 figures, I accept there would be a slight um, over-representation because my other proposal is that we increase the number of councillors in the Roos Ward, incorporating those two other areas of Clancarven and St Nicholas Bombleston. I am proposing that we increase the number of councillors in the Roos Ward to four, that we no longer have the proposal for a St uh, Clancarven and St Nicholas Ward, so I'm not proposing that we increase the number of councillors over and above the Boundary Commission's recommendation. Um, so that is my proposal. It would make the Roos Ward fractionally, uh, very marginally overrepresented, but it would also have the benefit if you put um, St George's into Peterston, that that ward is again more near to, is nearer to the um, figures that the Boundary Commission is looking at. We can't base everything on figures. If we base everything on figures, 
that she had virtually every recommendation in the Boundaries Commission report would be rejected, either being over or under, some by a considerable margin. I wouldn't like to see us starting to um, uh, sort of gerrymander. Um, Council, you have one minute. Towards, so, uh, towards as they do say, for example, in the American House of Representatives. So, my proposal is that we increase Bruce representation to four members by include by con um, continuing Clank Carvin in it and adding Bonvalston um, and St Nicholas and that St George is being moved to the Peace System Award. That is my proposal, Madam Mayor, and I hope I'll have support for that. Thank, Thank you very Madam much. Do you, have a, do you have a seconder for that, Councillor Bailey? Second, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. I'm going to take a vote on this proposal. Uh, is it possible to speak? Before? Hello? Is it possible okay. to speak? Councillor yes. Morgan is going to speak over the phone, please. Sorry? Um, I'd like to speak to you. I want to speak on this amendment. I don't know whether anybody can hear me. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah, right, so I wasn't sure. Uh, no, I, I only wanted to speak because this is something that I was going to raise particularly as far as St George's is concerned. I had a telephone call this afternoon from the chairman of the St George's and St Bride's Community Council. Poor St Bride seems to get dropped out of this, but, but it is a joint community council, St Bride's and St George's. Uh, geographically, St Bride's and St George's are a long way down the hill away from the A48. Historically, they've always been connected with Peterston, um, and it's, it's a natural natural area. So they have asked me to say they want to remain with Peterson. I would ask them to do that, but they want to remain with Peterson because that's the, the natural place for them to be. Um, my ward is, is strange in that it extends from St George's up the hill as far as the Downs, which is the other side of the A48. Now, what is not clear from these proposals is are the boundaries of the community councils actually changing? Because if that is the case, St George's and St Bride's will would and these these recommendations go ahead. St George's and St Bride's would fall within the areas of two different councillors. You'd have Wenbow and Peterston. But to that extent, I am with the proposal on this that St Bride's and St George's remain as they are as part of the Peterston ward. So to that extent, I would support this motion. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. To the best of my understanding, what I've been given to understand that the St George's and St Bride's um, with community councils will actually stay as they are. They won't be affected. Yes. Right. Uh, is there anybody else wishes to speak on this? No. When we go to a vote on this, then. Can we have a point, please, of the actual motion on the table at the moment? Can we reiterate? Councillor Bailey? Uh, I'm sure Councillor Kemp will be able to reiterate the uh, amendment he proposed. Yes, Madam Mayor, I'm happy to do Thank that. You. My proposal is that the Roos Ward be increased to four members, and with the Roos Ward, uh, incorporating at Clancarven and St Nicholas and Bonvalston, and that St George's and St Bride's, if necessary, be retained in the Peterson Ward. So that means that there would be no proposal. The proposal would be that we do not have the ward that is described as St Nicholas and Clancarven. It doesn't increase the numbers of Con the Council at all. Thank you for that. And do we have a second for that? Already seconded. Already seconded. Thank you. Are we go to a vote? Thank you, Chair. Um, so same same uh, process. If you are against the motion, say against. If you are for that amendment, say for, please. So, Councillor Aviat. Against. Councillor Bailey. For the amendment. Councillor Birch. Thank 
Against. Against. Thank you. Councillor Bird. Against. Councillor Brooks. Against. Councillor Burnett. Against. Councillor Carroll. For. Councillor Cave. Councillor Cave, for. Okay. Councillor Charles. For the motion. Councillor Collins. Sorry. Councillor Collins. Against. Councillor Cox. Against the motion. Councillor Crowley. For the motion. Councillor Drake. Against. Councillor Driscoll. For the amendment. Councillor Edwards. For the amendment. Councillor Gray. Against the amendment. Councillor Owen Griffiths. Against the amendment. Councillor Stephen Griffiths. For the amendment. Councillor Hampton. For the amendment. Councillor Hanks. Against the amendment. Councillor Hodges. Against. Councillor Hunter Jarvie. Against the amendment. Councillor John. Against. Councillor Johnson. An Erbin Aguessiant. Councillor Kemp. For the motion. Councillor King. Against the amendment. Councillor Marnie back on the meeting. Again, I have absolutely no idea what you're even voting on. For or against or abstaining? Well, neither, none. I don't know what even the votes are. Okay, Councillor McCaffer. Okay. Councillor Anne Moore. Against. Councillor Neil Moore. Against. Councillor Morgan. For. Councillor Norman. Against. Councillor Nugent Finn. For the amendment. Councillor Parker. Against. Councillor Penrose. Against. Councillor Perks. Against. Councillor Robertson. For the amendment. Thank you. Councillor Rowlands. I'm going to follow Councillor Morgan and vote for the amendment. Councillor Sivanyanam. Against. Councillor John Thomas. Against. Councillor Neil Thomas. Against. Councillor William. Van Against. Councillor Wilkinson. Can't hear you, Councillor Wilkinson. Okay, against. Okay. Councillor William. Against. Councillor Wilson. Okay, and Councillor Wright. For the amendment. Okay, that's 15 for the amendment and 28 against. Thank you very much. So the, again, the amendment has fallen. So can we go back to the original then, please? The Is there one for... there? May I? May I? Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. I just want to, following up what I said earlier, whether it's feasible for me to add in a further suggested amendment that the community councils of St Bride's and St George's remain with the Peterston Ward, that being the wish of the people who live there, as communicated to me by the chairman of the community council. That's the reason I'm making this suggestion, because that's what I'm asked to do by the people who live there. 
I will second that amendment, uh, Madam Mayor. Thank you for that, Councillor. Any other comments on that? Um, this, yes, I, I do have an amendment that I'm trying to make. I thought I was next, but I'll uh, wait while this uh, is happening. Right. Um, well, I think uh, Councillor Morgan, uh, Morgan just jumped in there then. Um, right, we, we go back to, I think Councillor Cave has been waiting quite a long time. Uh, if we can go back, and we'll come back to Councillor Morgan um, later on. So if you can go to Councillor Cave now for her amendment to this motion, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, firstly, I'd like to begin by saying I think it's very sad that members this evening are voting along party lines uh, rather than listening to the wishes of the local community councils and the people they so very well represent. Um, the communities of Colwinston, Ueni, Landau, Clangarn, St Bride's Major, St Donitz, and Wick, as um, Madam Mayor is um, no doubt aware, um, are widely regarded locally as part of an area known as the Western Vale. They all comprise of small rural villages and hamlets, each represented by community councils, and they share very many characteristics and strong local ties. I wholeheartedly support the Commission's recommendations to increase the number of councillors representing these communities from two to three. At present, the existing Landau Ueni ward, which I represent, and St Bride's major wards are both underrepresented. Um, with the respective number of electors in each ward 10% above and 24% above the county average, which has already been pointed out this evening. I also welcome the Commission I'm sorry, Councillor Cave, we seem to have lost you. <laughs> Councillor Cave? We seem to have lost you, Councillor Cave. Am I, am I back with you now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. got, I think I've got... Yeah. Okay, I, I, I don't know where you lost me at, but I will begin uh, where I think you've lost me. I, I, obviously, connection must have gone down there. I also welcome the Commission's decision to include the community of St Donnet within the St Bride's Major Ward, which I do believe better reflects local ties than when it, where it currently sits within the Lantwick Major Ward. However, I have considerable concerns relating to the boundaries of the proposed Landau and St Bride's major wards due to the fact it will result in the splitting of an established and long held ties. The community of Ueni has long standing ties, particularly with Colwinston. Landau and Clangarn. If we look at the plaque that sits above our, usually in our mayor, mayor, above our mayoral chair, you know, Landau and Ueni sit as one ward. And that Landau and Ueni have particularly asked me, the community councils, um, that we better reflect and keep them within the current structure than what is currently being proposed. There is considerable local opposition to the plan to split these cities, which I do not consider to be in the interest, interest of effective and convenient local government. And I would like to move an amendment that the existing Landau Ueni and St Bright's major wards be combined, along with the community of St Donnets, to create a new three-member ward 
and that the ward be called the Western Vale. This proposed three member ward would comprise of 5,024 electors with a ratio of 7% below the count, county average. So I'm proposing that the, the name for this new ward be the Western Vale so that it better reflects the shared history, which at the moment has, I think, been uh, disregarded. I second that, Madam Mayor. Um, this, I'm afraid, is, is not an amendment to the original. It is an extra motion. Um, this is a, something that we can deal with later. It's not an amendment to the original motion. So oh, it's an amendment to the original motion, Madam Mayor. Uh, Ma Madam Mayor, Madam Mayor, can I can I say this is very similar to the motion that we've just heard. You know, I'm I'm asking that yes, we still keep what the Commission has recommended as the three councils. But I'm just saying that instead of those uh, being uh, three independent wards, that they be combined into one ward, calling that the Western Vale. And I do believe that is an amendment to the original. Yeah. Sorry, can I just clarify? Um, um, we'll treat a Council of Caves motion, if it's seconded, as a notice of motion, um, and we'll, we'll deal with Councillor Morgan's um, amendment, um, which has been seconded first, and we'll take the vote on that, and then move on to Councillor Caves' motion. Are you all right with that, Councillor Cave? Yes, that would be perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Well, have you have a have we do have a seconder for Councillor Morgan's uh, motion? I um I seconded that before, Madam Mayor. If you could. Uh, Thank you, Councillor Gray. Now we need to vote on that, that amendment, and please. Can you unmute? Um, Councillor yeah. Cave. Yeah. Councillor Ian Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. So just to clarify, we're voting on the proposal by Councillor Morgan to remove the um, St George's uh, area into St into Peterson Super Ely. That would leave a, a rump, um, Slang Carven and uh, St Nicholas Bonvalston area, which by a very, very quick um, look at the numbers would be substantially below the number um, that's required by the Local Boundary Commission. So I'm just clarifying that Councillor Morgan is, is, is happy that his amendment creates a, a situation where something would be almost 40% below the, the anticipated numbers, because that just doesn't, um, I can see the politics of this, but you know, given that we, there are some, uh, some, some, you know, some ground rules for this, this seems not to make a lot of sense to me. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Councillor Morgan, do you want to come back on this? Right, can you hear me? Yeah, as I say, um, it, yeah. it, it's not, uh, with respect to, to Dr Johnson, a political matter at all. This is simply what the local people have asked me, because this is how it always has been, and this is how they want it to continue to be, because we are much closer in Peterston, Pendoil, and we are much closer to St Brides and St George's. We share the same interests, we share the same goals, we are within the same community. And if you removed uh, St Brides and St George's out of that, um, because there's a large area of countryside between St George's and St Brides before you get to the A48, it's not a heavily populated area, but they're, they're very distant, if you like, from the, the good folk of Frank Harbour. So really, all I'm asking for is for things to remain as they are. Thank you very much, Councillor Moore. I think Councillor Gray wants to come in on this one. Uh, yeah, it was just um, obviously uh, in seconding the amendment and, and responding to, to Councillor Johnson, uh, there was a comment made earlier on the um, <clears throat> amendment. He proposed uh, that the percentages and the numbers and the decisions ultimately out of our hands and this is something the Boundary Commission are going to look at. Uh, I appreciate bringing maths to the table here but this is a statement of principle as, as was stated earlier around Dennis Powis. 
Uh, and so I, I don't see any problem moving forward with having this amendment uh, proposed and voted on by the members uh, to, to, to see to see how that is received uh, in in order to uh, better represent um, uh, the uh, the views of keeping these community councils linked to those uh, the, the, those those Vale councils. So um, I, I believe we're moving forward to the vote now anyway. So I'll, I'll be quiet. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Gray. Can we go through the vote now, please? Can we vote on the amendment as uh, put uh, forward by Councillor Morgan? Thank you, Chair. Thank Can you. I just ask Councillor Morgan, um, just to clarify once more time so people are aware what they're voting for, exactly what the motion was, please. Councillor Morgan. The, the motion is that the Community Council of St Brides and St George's remains within the Peterston Ward and is not transferred or absorbed into any new ward that might come to, into existence. Um, whether that be Clan Carbon, St Nicholas, Bondleston, Wenville, or whatever. So, so that's my motion that the Community Council of St Brides and St George's remains within the Peterston Ward of the Vale of Glamorgan Council. Okay, thank you, Councillor Morgan. That's very clear. Yeah. So, oh, if you uh, are for that, the leader wants to come in now. Sorry, um, can I just have clarification? As we're talking here about community council boundaries. Community council boundaries are not being dealt with here. They're talking about county boundaries. Um, and the community councils are going to stay the same, aren't they? So, I'm sorry, but I just don't understand what we, we're going down this route because this is a, a, a matter for county boundaries, county ward boundaries, and not community council I'm not sure it's relevant, and I'd like to ask the most of Yes, thank, thank you. And, I, and that is a point that needs to be clarified with regards to St Brides, because, of course, St Brides um, at electoral ward level does not form part of Peterson Super Ely. Um, so Peterson Super Ely is currently comprised of Pen the communities of Pendoylan, Peterson Super Ely, Welsh St Donuts and George's uh, Super Ely. Um, so those are the four communities that currently make up Peterson Super Ely. And the proposal from the um, Commission is for Peterson Super Ely to comprise of Pendoylan, Peterston Super Ely, and Welsh St Donuts. So losing um, George's Super uh, St George's Super Ely, um, but St Bride's uh, makes up the ward of currently. It forms part of the ward of. St. Uh, St. Bride's Major and Wick, with St. with the proposal being St. Bride's Major, um, uh, making up a new ward with Wick, UNE, and uh, St. Donuts. May I respond to that? I think there's some confusion. I'm talking about St. Bride's Super Ely, not St. Bride's Major. Oh, thank can you. I... Thank you for clarifying. Can I... The point is that if, if we agree this, that we are therefore not agreeing the boundaries that were already proposed, we're changing the boundaries for the wards too. Because if, the, if you're saying those community councils stay within the, the county wards, that means the, ward, the county wards have changed. Or am I missing something? I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I, I, I can't see how you can you mix, mix, mix community council wards unless they're within the boundaries of the council ward. And again, well, well, they are. Sorry, currently, um, St George's and St Bride's Super Ely really, are within the Peterston ward, and, and so far as I'm aware, have been for for decades. Um, so I'm not. I'm just. I'm just asking that the matters remain the same. Um, and it's relevant because these are the community councils I represent, and they have they have asked me to make these representations to the council because that's my duty as a councillor to represent my my communities. And if that's what they ask me to do, I'm doing the right thing by coming to this meeting and saying that St Brides and St Georges do not want to be taken out of the, their current area because. 
that's how they would like to remain. But it, it's not, we're not told, I, I don't know what the population sizes are, but the, the populations of St. Bridges and, and St. George's are small. We're not talking about thousands of people there. It's the villages of Bonbolston and St. Nicholas that are increasing rapidly in size because of new development. But that's not happening in St. Bride's Super Ely or St. George's Super Ely. Thank you. To clarify then, rather than the proposed amendment by the Commission, my understanding is that Councillor Morgan has moved and it's been seconded that the current arrangement continues. Exactly. Yep. Should we proceed to the vote? Can we take a vote on that then, please? The amendment as proposed by Councillor Morgan. Okay, so if you're for the amendment, if you can say so, and if you're against, likewise. So if we start with Councillor Aviat. Against. Councillor Bailey. For the amendment. Councillor Birch. Councillor Bird. Oh. What was that, Councillor Bird? <clears throat> For the amendment. For, thank you. Councillor Brooks. Against. Councillor Burnett. Against. Councillor Carroll. Oh. Councillor Cave. Oh. Councillor Charles. Oh. Councillor Collins. Against. Councillor Cox. Against. Councillor Crowley. Oh. Councillor Drake. Against. Councillor Driscoll. For Councillor Edwards. For the amendment. Councillor Gray. For the amendment. Councillor Owen Griffiths. Amendment. Councillor Owen Griffiths. Against the amendment. Thank you. Councillor Stephen Griffiths. For the amendment. Councillor Hampton. For the amendment. Councillor Hanks. For the amendment. Councillor Hodges. Against. Councillor Hunter Jarvey. For the amendment. Councillor John. For the amendment. Councillor Johnson. And there have been a question. Councillor Kemp. For the amendment. Councillor King. For once I'm going to abstain. Councillor Marnie. Abstain. Abstain. Councillor Marnie. Councillor McCaffer. For the amendment. Kevin Marnie here, go, if you want to go back. Yeah, Councillor Marnie. Again, I'm afraid I can't vote for something I haven't heard most of. Okay, thank you. Councillor Ann Moore. Again, sorry, I didn't hear me, sorry. Councillor Neil Moore. Against. Councillor Morgan. Thank you. Councillor Norman. For. Councillor Nugent Finn. For. Councillor Parker. For. Councillor Penrose. Against. Councillor Perks. Against. Councillor Robertson. For the amendment. Councillor Rowlands. For Councillor Morgan's amendment. Councillor so, Siviniana. Against. Councillor John Thomas. For. Councillor Neil Thomas. Against. Councillor William. 
and Erbin. Councillor Wilkinson. Against, okay. Councillor Williams. Abstain. Councillor Wilson. Councillor Wilson, can you hear me? Oh, Councillor Wright. For the amendment. For. Okay. Bear with me one moment. Hello. Hello. Can anybody hear me? Hello. Oh, you can. So I, I lost my connection to do a vote. So did you want my vote? It was counted in favour. Oh, good. Thank you. That was all. Thank you. Okay. It's um, 20, 23 in favour of the amendment, 19 against, and two abstains. Thank you. So that amendment has been carried. Can we now go to Councillor Cave's amendment, please? Councillor Cave? Yes, Madam Mayor, do you want me to read out the amendment again? Or I, I realise I know. I think I we take that as read, and we have a seconder for that. Second, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Then we go to the vote on Councillor Cave's. Did anybody want a recap on it, or are we all? Okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we go, we, go straight, we go straight to the vote on that then, please. Okay. Can you mute? Thank you. Okay, um, as I see it, this amendment was for a new Western Vale ward. Um, so if you're for that amendment, please say for or against. Uh, Councillor Aviat. Against. Councillor Bailey. Or Councillor Birch. Councillor Bird. Yes. Sorry, Against. I couldn't catch. Thank you. Councillor Brooks. Against. Councillor Thank you. Councillor Burnett. Against. Councillor Carroll. Or oh. Councillor Cave. For the amendment. Councillor Charles. For the amendment. Councillor Collins. Against. Councillor Cox. Against. Councillor Crowley. For. Councillor Drake. Against. Councillor Driscoll. For. Councillor Edwards. For the amendment. Councillor Gray. Against the amendment. Councillor Owen Griffiths. Against the amendment. Councillor Stephen Griffiths. For the amendment. Councillor Hampton. For the amendment. Councillor Hanks. Abstain. Councillor Hodges. Against. Councillor Hunter Jarvey. Against. Councillor John. Against. Councillor Johnson. And Erwin. Councillor Kemp. It's good to hear some strong arguments against the motion, but I'll vote for it. Councillor King. Against. Councillor Marnie. Again, refuse to vote due to not hearing all the arguments. Councillor McCaffer. Against. Councillor Anne Moore. Against. 
Councillor Neil Moore. Against. Councillor Morgan. For the amendment. Councillor Norman. Against. Councillor Nugent Finn. For the amendment. Councillor Parker. Against. Councillor Penrose. Against. Councillor Perks. Against. Councillor Robertson. For the amendment. Councillor Rowlands. Is that Councillor Morgan T. Sent for the amendment? Councillor Sivanianam. Against. Councillor John Thomas. Against. Councillor Neil Thomas. Against. Councillor Stefan William. Been. Councillor Wilkinson. Against. Okay, thank you. Councillor Eddie Williams. Against. Councillor Wilson. Councillor Wright. Four. Okay, I'll go back, Councillor Wilson. No, okay. Bear with me. Okay, that was 27 against, 15 for, and one abstention. So that motion fails. Thank you very much. Can we go back to the substantive motion, please? No. Could you just bear with me to read? Because there have been so many amendments. See which one we were voting on. So we vote on the basis of the Right. We're voting on the original motion incorporating Councillor Morgan's amendment. Point of order, Madam Mayor. Sorry, Madam Mayor, I, I wanted to put a clarification on the vote because it was read that it was 15, and actually it wasn't 15, uh, voted for the amendment. Councillor Morgan voted for the amendment, and so did Councillor Hampton, therefore, would make 16. Bear with me, I'll check with the uh, people doing the scores. Uh, they said it was 16 votes for. Oh, sorry, apologies, it was 16 for and not 15. So it's 16 for. It also happened on Councillor Kemp's uh, vote as well that the, recorded, uh, the vote was not recorded correctly. <laughs> uh, just for clarity, I've got the votes in front of me and I, I'm counting 15 for the amendment. Well, Councillor Hampton voted on four and so did Councillor uh, Morgan voted for as well. So therefore that would make 16, including the Conservative vote, for 14. I do apologise, Councillor Andrew R. Davis is not here. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Thank you. If everyone showed up, you'd be right. right. Can we resume, please? So we will now take a vote on the substantive both motion with Councillor Morgan's Point amendment. Of order. Which is? What um, is your point of order? Yeah, um, just a question in relation to proceed, procedure. Um, I'm conscious that, I think it was Councillor Johnson pointed out, that were Councillor Morgan's amendment to pass, then obviously it would result in the Council, in effect, proposing a wall that would have a variance. Uh, Councillor, Councillor, your picture is not on screen, so could, could you identify yourself, please? Um, it's Councillor George Carroll. Apologies for that, Madam Mayor. Um, Thank you. I note that a question in relation to procedure, Madam Mayor. I note that um, Councillor Morgan's amendment has passed. 
pass, which if the um, motion as currently amended passes, um, the council will be making a representation for an electoral ward, Lancarven and St Nicholas, which will have a number of electors significantly below the um, county average. I note that Councillor Kemp's amendment rejected, um, which would have taken the community of St George's and St Bride's out of the proposed St Nicholas and Lancarven ward and instead put the communities of St Nicholas and Lancarven in with the Goose ward would, uh, would in effect address this variance. So I, my question is whether that amendment could be reconsidered either by another member tabling it since that would, since this has fundamentally changed matters and that proposal would address this. Second, Madam Mayor. Thank you, councillors. We will, we will seek clarification on this point. Could you please clarify your point of or your question again, please, so the officer can pick it up? Yes, um, Madam Mayor, it's basically in relation to whether an amendment, i.e. that proposed by Councillor Kemp, having been considered once, could be reconsidered. The reason I ask that is because following the passing of Councillor Moore's amendment as things stand, um, assuming the motion itself passes, this will result in the council recommending an electoral board, St Nicholas and Lancarven, that will have a number of electors substantially divergent from the county average. Um, if Councillor Kemp's proposed amendment were reconsidered and approved by council, that would in effect um, address this disparity because the communities of St Nicholas and Lancarven would instead, rather than being a standalone ward, go into the loose ward. Thank you, Councillor. I think we have clarification on that. I'll pass yes, it to the officer. To, yes, to clarify, um, Councillor Kemp's uh, motion has been dealt with and that was not supported. Um, with regards to the um, Commission's proposal, um, it currently stands that um, St Nicholas and St Carven, um, let me just confirm this. Uh, St Nicholas uh, would be in the new ward of of St Nicholas and Lancarven um, with with Bombleston. So that uh, be, given the fact that we've now dealt with and supported the um, amendment by Councillor Michael Morgan. So unless there's a further amendment which is seconded, um, um, that, that is the position that, that, that we are currently in. So it would require a further amendment. Thank you for that. Councillor Carroll, you um, wish to come back in? In that case, Madam Mayor, I shall propose a further amendment. Um, I appreciate this matter has in effect been considered by this council already. But obviously matters have moved on now that we are going to be recommending for the communities of St George's and St Bride's to continue in the Peterson Super Ely Board rather than move into the Council's proposed new St Nicholas and Lancarven Board. As a result of that, this board is now set to have a number of electors that is significantly different from the county average. Now, members will recall Councillor Kemp's proposed amendment a few moments ago, which in effect proposed the council supporting an enlarged Roose ward that would comprise the communities of Roose, Lancarven and St Nicholas and Bondleston. This would be a four member ward, which would have a slight variance, but much closer to the proposed average than that that this authority um, is currently proposing by leaving the community of St George's in the Peterson Ward. So therefore, Madam Mayor, I propose that we make a submission to the Boundary Commission that a loose ward 
with four members comprising the communities of Roos, Plan Carbon, and St Nicholas and Bondleston be made to the boundary. No, we commission. can't. We've dispensed with that. Point, point of order is not the same resolution, madam. Yes. Yes. Yes, that was the that was the motion that we voted on. That was Councillor Kemp's motion, and that was uh, not supported. Sorry, uh, Madam Mayor, you can't have one uh, motion passed on a community-based uh, council, and then you know vote for a motion that's completely different on a county basis. It's just completely wrong. Councillor, please, could you identify yourself? As the legislation says, uh, uh, Madam Mayor, I can, as long as I can be heard, please, I don't Please need identify yourself, Councillor. I, I, we don't have your picture on screen. Could you identify yourself, please? Yes, I'm Councillor Rowland, um, and I don't have to be on camera as per the legislation. Could you repeat your uh, statement, please, Councillor Rowlands? That the fact that a motion has been passed in relation to the county um, boundaries, uh, that sort of defeats the object of the, uh, as in the community uh, meeting, uh, the, the community um, council, and the fact that this contradicts the county one. You, I see no reason why there can't be a motion um, to have uh, a vote on the community, uh, on the uh, county, to reflect the boundaries. I think this has already been dealt with, Councillor, and we need to go and vote now as a sanctioned motive motion with the amendment. Right, could we have a vote on this? Can I ask a point of clarification, please? And there was something I tried to say earlier on. If we agree, community councils to say together, are they still proposing that become the county ward? Because if it is, there's a total different proposition of being presented. Exactly. I know, that's what I tried to say earlier on. And, and that's and with all due respect, that's the reason I voted against it, because without having the figures in front of you and without realising what the difference is, if you get, just keep community councils together, you want it, I think what's being said is this, they also stay in the same county ward. And that's why I, that's why I think it's um, superfluous and why I will vote against it. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Uh, I'll pass you over now to the Officer for clarification on that point. Yes, um, just to clarify, I mean, as, as indicated in the Commission's draft proposal report, um, part of their building blocks are the community um, communities as they currently exist, um, and, and that that shapes the the, the proposals. Um, so we're now at a point when we're voting on the. Um, um, motion um, as set out in the report but subject to the amendment made by um, Councillor Morgan so that the um, proposals of the Local Democracy and Boundary Commission um, as set out in their report be accepted save for the proposals relating to the Cornswell and Clandock electoral wards which is recommended continue to be two separate electoral wards for the reasons detailed in paragraph 27 of the report um, and the recommendation as per, per the amend, um, Councillor Morgan's amendment and that the second um, element of the motion is that the recommendations with regards to the names of the electoral wards um, be agreed as detailed in 
um, paragraph 28 of the report and that those recommendations um, be submitted to the um, Local Democracy and Boundary Commission um, as the Council's proposals. Thank you for that. Can we go to vote, please? Madam Mayor, sorry, could I just ask? I'm, I'm, I'm slightly confused. I'm not really sure how I... I, I don't seem to be able to uh, gain, gain anybody's attention, um, but I just wanted to come in. and I didn't want to cut across anybody else that was speaking uh, to make my point. I, I, I'm very confused here because I can't understand why members are prepared to listen to the wishes of one community council and ignore the wishes of another community council. Um, so I, I'm rather, I, I am very rather confused as the way the voting has gone this evening, uh, unless what we're suggesting here is that uh, nobody's actually listening to the debate and just going along past the lines. Thank you for that, Councillor Cave. I think that uh, that has been covered and uh, we need to move on. So, as I understand it, it's a vote uh, for the um, uh, for the motion would be for the report as recommended, but with the addition of Councillor Morgan's um, amendment earlier that was carried uh, or against. So, um, if I go to Councillor Aviat first, please. For. Councillor Bailey. Abstain. Councillor Birch. Councillor Bird. Or. Councillor Brooks. For. Councillor Burnett. Against. Councillor Carroll. Abstain. Councillor Cave. Abstain. Councillor Charles. Abstain. Councillor Collins. Against. Councillor Cox. For. Councillor Crowley. Abstain. Councillor Drake. For. Councillor Driscoll. Against. Sorry, sorry, I meant abstain. Thank you. Abstain. Yeah, got it. Yeah. Councillor Edwards. Abstain. Councillor Gray. Four. Councillor Owen Griffiths. <laughs> Councillor Owen Griffiths, can you hear me? No, okay. Councillor Stephen Griffiths. Against. Councillor Hampton. Against. Councillor Hanks. For. Councillor Hodges. Against. Councillor Hunter Jarvie. For. Councillor John. For. Councillor Johnson. And Ervin, against. Councillor Kemp. Abstain. Councillor King. Against. Councillor Marnie. I can't vote. I've been cut off and the motion was presented. Thank you. Councillor McCaffer. Against. Councillor Arnmore. Councillor Anmore. No, Councillor Anmore. Against. Thank you. Councillor Neil Moore. I'm afraid I have to go with the Cabinet uh, report and therefore I have to be against. Thank you. Councillor Michael Morgan. Councillor Morgan. Come back, Councillor Norman. Against. Councillor Nugent Finn. 
Abstain. Councillor Parker. Four. Abstain. Councillor Penrose. Against. Councillor Perks. Against. Councillor Robertson. Against. Councillor Rowlands. Abstain. Councillor Sivanianum. Against. Councillor John Thomas. For. Councillor Neil Thomas. Against. Councillor William. Anerbin. Councillor Wilkinson. Against. Okay, thank you. Councillor Williams. Against. Councillor Wilson. Councillor Wilson, can you hear me? Okay, thank you. Councillor Wright. Against. Against, okay. I'm just going to check I didn't get Councillor Morgan's vote earlier. Uh, four. Thank you, Councillor Morgan. And I believe there was one other, Councillor Wilson. Can you hear me? Ah, no, I got that. Councillor Griffiths, sorry, Councillor Owen Griffiths. No? Okay, bear with me. Some of that vote was 20 was against the motion, 14 was for, and 10 abstentions. Can I ask a question? A leader wishes to speak? Yes, I just want to point the kitchen. I think if that's for we'll not be putting that proposal forward to the bump. Councillor Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I was going to ask for a statement from the leader or from the cabinet member with regards to the feature, and I think that's just been answered. Thank you. Right, shall we move on? Madam Mayor. Uh, Madam Mayor, I didn't actually hear what Councillor Moore said, but I was going to ask the same question as Ian Johnson, I think, which is to ask for a statement now of, with regards following this vote. But I didn't actually hear what uh, Neil said because, or what the leader said, because he cut out quite substantially. Okay. Right. Uh, okay. Councillor Moore, can you repeat, please? Yeah, what I asked was, that being the case that the, the amendment uh, as proposed was lost, it would mean that we do not send any proposal to the Boundary Commission. Am I correct? You're correct with that, Leader. Thank you. Madam Mayor, may, may I just throw a suggestion in? Should we not vote on the unamended and just see where that takes us? Councillor, please, can you identify yourself as you're not on screen? <laughs> Yep, sorry, Jonathan Bird. Uh, I just wonder if it may be worth having a vote on the unamended, just to see if we can get that through. Point of clarification, Madam Mayor, hasn't that effectively already been considered as well? In the same way as we couldn't go back to Councillor Kemp's amendment yes. for a second time, we've already considered this in this form, so we can't surely look at that again either. Surely we just have to move forward having not agreed as a council to take a unified position? Because we are moving on, yes. Yeah. Right, can we move on to 6C, please, the annual treasury report? 
Yes, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, this is a report on the annual Treasury Management. Candidate uh, today considered and approved the annual report on the Council's tre Treasury Management for the operation from the 1st of April to the 31st of March. Oh, yeah. the, the annual report explains the chief conditions and the Treasury Management operations were carried out during the year. Council's primary objective is management of, of the investment are to give priority to the security and liquidity of its funds before seeking the best rate of return. Saying this, the authority placed the majority of its funds available um, for investment purposes with other local authorities during the year. These are slightly more favourable than the UK government, but uh, but it still gives us a priority fund for the for security for the funds. This was a change. This was a change in practice this year, but uh, indeed the. the um, the way, the, the way that we continue with our, our investment is so. Somebody's talking. I think someone's mic's still on, Madam Mayor. Councillor, Council, can you make sure your mics are muted, please? We're getting a lot of background chatter. Apparently, his call is on the telephone. Sorry, okay. Lisa. It's all right. It's fine. Um, as I said, we, we invested very widely. For the first time this year, the Council made use of the UK Treasury bills as an alternative to investment with other local authorities, and that provided more flexibility. When managing the Council's debt, the primary concern is ensure long-term affordability. Um, in, insofar as the, the council's treasury management operations entered into during the year are concerned, all treasury management activity undertaken for the final year, financial year, complied with the council's approval strategy, the SIPA code of practice, and the relevant legislative provisions. Uh, at cabinet today, they, they approved the, um, the, 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 the report and sent it to council here tonight, and I'm asking that the council approve the report as an annual treasury management report for the year. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I don't know why the I don't know why it's it's reverberating, but I might actually just just get out of this and try and get back in again later. And can I formally second, please, Madam Mayor? Thank you very much. Um, do we have any comments on this? Uh, if nobody has any comments, I take it as passed. Thank you very much. Are we lead, moving on now to six um, D? Again, Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mayor. This is a very uh, detailed report, and I do not intend to go into it in any detail. Um, this is to present the draft Belga Morgan Animal Report, which I think some of us call the Improvement Plan Part 2, and I'll have a headache, um, which outlines our progress towards achieving the Council's wellbeing and improvement objectives agreed in April 2019. Due to the timescale set for the legislation, the revised schedule of council meetings and COVID-19, then it, it could not go to scrutiny committees. So it came to the cabinet and it's now coming to you for council for consideration. However, I do have to say the majority of the information contained within the report has previously been reported to scrutiny committees and cabinet on a quarterly basis previously. Um, and, this, uh, and, and the consultation has been undertaken with the strategic leadership team and relevant sponsoring directors. Um, I, could, I could go into some issues, but I, I'd like not to because we've had a long time uh, tonight. Uh, but basically, if you're on balance, the, um, the, the significant process has been, progress has been made in achieving our vision, given an overall performance drug status of green, uh, which has been reported elsewhere. Um, there's some, our strong progress in delivering the final year's programme, is can, it does bode with the uh, corporate plan. The inside board has been looking at the issues and, and there's a tracker, which you can find on page 93 to 97, should you wish, and that's the areas of development. In terms of the head of audit, um, their annual opinion is that he has uh, his reasonable assurance. And again, the Future Generations Commission has published their report. And, and and referred to um, some of the issues in it, which I won't go in, but mostly to do with refugees 
and uh, raising awareness of ch child sexual exploitation, slavery and trafficking. Um, so the, the, what we're asking is the Council's um, endorsement of this draft annual delivery. Um, as I said, it hasn't gone to scrutiny, but this, but other things will be reported to scrutiny in the coming months and years, uh, as it will do. This, this is a snapshot. Somebody just said that the microphone is ridiculous. This is just a snapshot of where we are and, and the performance that we've had for the rest of this year. And the Mayor, I move, I move that we endorse the, 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 the plan. And if somebody could please to get that microphone. And formally second, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Any other comments? I move we accept it. Thank you, Leader. Madam Mayor, that takes us to um, item 7, 7A to uh, F, which are noting as they are all use of the agency decision procedure. So therefore noting, uh, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Leader. Uh, num um, number 8, to receive questions and answers from the Council. Uh, so we've got a list of um, questions for councillors given to Cabinet members. Right. Um, number the first one is from Councillor Janice Charles to the Cabinet Member for Housing and Building Services. Can I, but can anybody hear me? Can anybody hear me? Yes. 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 Oh. Right. right, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Charles, for your important question. There's been an anticipated increase in the demand for all temporary accommodation resulting from the COVID-19. In response, the Vailable Morgan has established a group considering a range of partners that meet regular through the internet. They manage temporary accommodation arrangements for all these people. Since April 2020, the councils entered into a local agreement with three hotels to block book rooms to provide emergency bed and breakfast accommodation to respond to the increase in homelessness, rough sleeping due to this virus. As many of these requirements, accommodations, and support needs, they have had access to daily telephone support and more recently, face to face support from Council Supporting People Team. In addition to the Housing Solution Team, has retained four council properties for use as alternative accommodation or emergency accommodation if an outbreak of the virus causes and um, where the residents have many problems self-isolating without direct support. The team has also got two private accommodations which we help in with Plan, uh, with Acura Flow, but to prove a temporary accommodation for the families dealing domestic abuse. Thank you. I hope everybody could do that. Supplementary, please. Thank you very much, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Charles, if you have a supplementary. Yes, please. Thank you. Thank you for that very precise um, report and the information that you, you have given us to us. Um, I know it's very difficult to be doing the job that the officers are doing under the coronavirus um, situation and difficulties bringing up. But um, I know that there's been an awful lot of money spent on accommodation uh, for the homeless. Do you have a figure? I haven't, got a, I haven't got a complete figure. I can get that for you and send it to you. 
but the, the, there is 10 million of funding has been approved be, uh, by the Welsh government to enable local authorities to secure the accommodation needed. But if you want the whole figure, I will get it for you. But that is, we have got 10 million uh, extra money. Thank you, Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Wilkinson. Uh, question two, again, from Councillor Charles to the leader and cabinet member for performance and resources. Thank, thank you, Madam Mayor. The Welsh Government has not earmarked any money to a specific council area. They have been consistent in requesting each local authority to provide a monthly schedule of expenses and loss of income as a direct result of COVID-19. These claims are assessed and paid to the relevant local authority on a quarterly basis and we received the first quarter payment in July. We continue to make monthly claims and will await the further payments in due course. On top of that, Welsh Government made up payments of the rate support grant and initially three months payments were made in April. Can I also refer you to the Cabinet report of the 7th of September when a full breakdown was supplied. If you want any information, you can read it in the report. Thank you, Leader. Have you got any supplementary for the Leader, Councillor Charles? Yes, please. Thank you, Councillor Moore. Um, I was just wondering, um, under the circumstances that we're in at the moment, and having just spoke to Councillor Wilkinson and her report, um, how many houses do you, this council forecast that we will need uh, in, in the next two years to provide decent accommodation for people? Well, as that is not one of on, a part of the portfolio, and it's nothing to do with the question you asked, I, I have nothing to answer. You asked about the cash boost for local authorities and not the number of houses. Sorry, I don't think that is a supplementary question. Councillor Charles, that's not a supplementary. Thank you. Question number three is from Councillor Driscoll, Cabinet Member for Neighbourhood Services and Transport. Yes, uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chairman. Thank you for the three questions, uh, Councillor. The, um, the Council has been actively progressing work to prove the case for the Penarth Headland link through the well tag process. I'm not sure what you mean by what are we doing to speed this up, as the process involves various stages which have to be followed in turn. Put simply, it is not within this council's remit to determine the process. Um, I'm unclear what other involvement you could be referring to that we could secure. The process is a well tag scheme and as such all avenues are being explored. To date, stage two well tag has been completed and full details can be found on the council's website. Despite bidding for grant funding to Welsh Government for well tag stage three of the link, it was determined by Welsh Government that other transport schemes were a higher priority in the Bay of New Organ for funding in 2020 to 2021. That said, we continue to liaise and we have regular di uh, dialogue with, our, with partners in order to progress the project through the well tag at stage three. Okay. Thank uh, you, Councillor. Do, uh, do, yeah. do we have a supplementary? Yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear yes. me? Yep. Yes. Okay, great. Um, thanks for that. Interesting. I'll, uh, I'll have a look on the, um, the website. Um, is, I, there's a lot of press reports about the amount of money this Council already spent on this project. Um, is, is £23 million pounds correct? I, I, I think you're going back in time uh, to a time before my term of office. Um, I have absolutely no idea how many pounds may have been spent or how many officer hours may have been spent considering the path head and link over the many, many years it's been mooted as very, in its various forms. But certainly, I promise you, I am not responsible for spending 23 million pounds. OK, thanks. Thanks for that. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, question number four from Councillor Driscoll again. 
to the uh, leader and leader and cabinet member for performance and, and resources. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is in relation to the good shed and good shed parking. Um, thank you for the question, and I can confirm that we will put further support this fantastic development and help with the parking situation, which is currently in hand, and on one which I have had several conversations with relevant officers as a my cabinet. However, we will not be doing as you suggest. Okay, okay thanks. Thanks for that. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Leader. Do you have a supplementary? Yes, yes, I was going to suggest. Oh, hold on, I've lost you all now a second. Let's go back. Um, I'm just wondering, wouldn't it be a logical logical step to let them have the, have the um, area behind? Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, um, a logical step to let them have the bit of the land earmarked for the Cardiff College, for, even if it's just a limited period of time? As I mentioned, I, I agree that the Hood Road Shed, Hood, Hood Road Good Shed development is a flagship mixed use regeneration project, which is located within the Innovation Portrait Valley of Waterfront. I agree it's a central substantial location, also by road, rail, cycleways, and pockets. It was also granted planning permission on this basis. That is the very sustainable location. The innovation quarter has established itself as a popular destination of the existing neighborhood shed development, adding to the success of the Barry Pump House, the Premier Inn and Brewers Fair, the BSC and the West Key Medical Centre. It demonstrates beyond doubt the value of the partnership between this council and the Welsh Government. Conven convenient car parking is recognised as important to help businesses and communities in flood use. You use, using this to flourish the innovation quarter. And so we have very recently opened up the public use for the 80 number space car park in front of the engine shed that is the council's BSC2 project at the rear of the pump house. And there's easy access from there to the good shed. This parking combined with the parking provided on the good shed site itself, the space available on the nearby highways and the site's excellent location to the to Barry stations means that there is sufficient space is available. A little more, just to explain what the, you're talking about, why we would not take up your suggestion. The existing road access from Ford Millennium to into the de undeveloped innovation quarter land, which is earmarked for the college and school, as you say, is not available for public access because it will be used exclusively for the construction traffic for the pending school, for the pending school works contract, and thereafter, the remainder of the land would become a construction site for the college. I'm sure you will accept the construction work and a public car park won't mix. It would be a health and safety disaster, and one that I would not be prepared to sign up to, let alone suggest. Thank you, Leader. Thank you, Councillor. Um, Question number five is again from Councillor Driscoll, the cabinet member for neighbourhood services and transport. Actually, it's to me um, because this is a, 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 it, it's a it's an asset. And it's in relation to the toilet block at Barry Island. So thank you for the questions. A simple answer to your first question is no because the preferred developer has a contract with the council setting out terms for an agreement to lease and a lease document. In, in answer to your second question, I believe that, uh, that as we are currently in the pandemic, it is not unexpected that there has been delays in the development, although I accept this is taking a lot longer than I would have envisaged when a contract To that end, Negotiations are currently ongoing with the developer to advance matters as soon as possible, and those negoti negotiations continue to be fruitful. Thank you very much, Leader. Uh, moving on. Question six from Councillor Ian, Dr. Ian Johnson, the Cabinet Member for Neighbourhood Services and Transport. No supplementary allowed, Madam. 
I do apologise. Going back, supplementary, supplementary, councillor. Uh, as it happens, there wasn't on that one. Actually, it, it speaks volumes. Looking at the state of the place at the moment, that's my my supplementary. Thank you for that. Moving on. From Councillor Dr. Ian Johnson to Cabinet Member for Neighbourhood Services and Transport. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Um, the Well Tag Stage 2 Plus report for improvements to transport in Dennis Paris, including consideration of the bypass, is due to be presented to Cabinet in November this year. Uh, in respect of the active travel route between Biggest Roundabout in Barry and Dennis Paris, the Council made a funding bid to the Welsh Government for this fiscal year in order to progress this key active travel scheme. The bid to Welsh Government comprised the request for funding to undertake a detailed topographical survey, 50k, further ground investigations, 60k, and a public stakeholder consultation, about £1,000. Unfortunately, the scheme was not prioritised for funding by Welsh Government this year. But as and when the opportunity arises, I will continue to seek funding for the scheme, which forms an, an important active travel link for this council. Thank you, Councillor. Do you have a supplementary, Dr Johnson? Uh, thank you very much for the response, Cabinet Member. As you heard earlier on, uh, there's been there's going to be a 20% increase in population in Dennis Powys, a lot of development and not a lot of infrastructure. Um, the active travel route was part of the 2015 local transport plan with a due finish date of 2020. Um, it's not beyond the wit of Cabinet to allocate the funding you just discussed um, towards that project to kickstart it. Uh, will you do so? If, if, if any opportunity arises, Councillor, we will we will certainly make, make further progress because it's a route that I am particularly keen to see um, complete. It's an integral part of, of, of the of the matrix that needs making up. So rest assured, if any opportunity arises, uh, yes, we will we will make, we will do it. Thank you, Councillors. Moving on from Councillor Dr. Ian Johnson to the leader of the Living Way Accreditation. <clears throat> Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. I've referred in the resolution that actually said that the Vale Council works towards becoming a formally accredited living wage employer with a living wage foundation and, and commits to paying all direct employees the real living wage, as well as developing policies to ensure that the real living wage is paid to indirectly employed staff. With regard to the council, the lowest hourly rate currently payable is £9.43 an hour, which exceeds both the national living wage, which is £8.72 or over 25s, and the voluntary real living wage of £9.30. The council's minimum rate of £9.43 per hour is also paid to agency workers, therefore meeting a significant part of the living wage condition term. During the pandemic, the Council did recognise the contribution made by frontline staff, who continue to provide services to our communities by paying a 10% uplift to these staff for the period April to August 2020. This payment was also made, this is important, I think, to external social care providers. In terms of the rest of the resolution, discussions are ongoing with regards to the implications of a full rollout of the living wage across all those organisations who provide services on behalf of the Vale of Glamorgan. Thank you. Thank you, Leader. The supplementary, Dr Johnson. Uh, thank you for that, um, that response, Leader. I'm very pleased to hear of the progress and so far undertaken. Uh, can I ask uh, what decision has been made with regards to continuing to pay that social care uplift as we continue through the coronavirus? You, you were well aware and everybody's been informed, as I just said, the 10% uplift was paid to staff for a period April to August 2020, and those payments at the end of August. Um, and all staff were informed before it came, became uh, applicable and have been informed since it ceased. 
we paid it during the, the, the major crisis of the corona, coronavirus uh, pandemic. Um, did it for that period. We are hoping, and I still continue to hope, that, there, that, the, that we will be in recovery and therefore um, not as as it was. But quickly, to answer your question, we are not paying it any longer, but that was the agreement that we made at the time. Thank you, Leader. Moving on to question eight. Uh, another question from Dr. Eden Johnson to the Cabinet Member for Housing and Building Services. Thank you, Councillor. Can I refer you back to question one that I answered to Janice Charles? Thank you. Do you have a supplementary, Dr. Johnson? Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank the Councillor for her, her uh, coming for her earlier um, response. Um, could she outline what plans there are to maintain um, an improvement in services through the winter? Well, um, this has been helped by the Welsh Government announcing earlier this week that a Phase 1 Homeless Fund will continue until 31st of March of next year. We have plans in place and we will be following them. Thank you, Councillor. Moving on, question 9, again from Councillor Ian Johnson to Cabinet Member Housing and Building Services. Uh, Thank you, uh, Councillor Johnson. Thank you for the question. I will summarise some of the work that has been carried out during the COVID-19. As you know, the authority is currently prov providing accommodation and support to vulnerable refugees under the Home Office Resettlement Scheme. As face-to-face -face contact with the refugees was not possible, we have had other ways to contact them and keep them informed. There was you, this was used to maintain the property services, which report a short term increase in receive and crisis invasion, particularly in relation to university credit. That is causing a lot of trouble for them. Safeguards were put in place to identify the welfare of the vulnerable users and ensure access to food, medication, and other vital support was available, along with the welfare checks being made personally, regularly. We sound to, in we sound to ensure that the adults could continue their studies online and support homeschooling when face-to-face -face learning ceased. Online brochure was created which contained links to the various online resources for the whole of the family, including supplementaries and language tutoring, gardening, cooking, yoga, and other fun activities. This is an ongoing situation and we will keep them informed and we will not let those people down. And thank you, thank you very thank much you. for that. Uh, uh, another supplementary, Dr. Johnson. Yes, yes, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much for that detailed uh, response uh, from the Cabinet Member. I'm very pleased to hear the work that's, um, that's been undertaken during the last six months uh, and for many years as part of this programme. Um, could the Cabinet Member tell me whether we've still been able to uh, resettle new people during these difficult times, or has that work been put on hold due to the coronavirus conditions? I'm not sure how many we've resettled, but I will get the written answer to you. I don't think there's been many out, uh, in with this uh, COVID-19, but I will get that uh, answer to you in writing. Thank you, Cabinet Member, and thank you, Dr. Johnson. Question number 10 is from Councillor uh, Mrs. Kaye, to the Cabinet Member for Neighbourhood Services and Transport. Hi there. Um, thank you for the question, but I do not consider that there is a need to have a separate rural roads policy, as the safety and traffic conditions are already considered specific to each circumstance and route based on the evidence 
available regardless of the route classification. Thank you, Councillor. Christine, uh, Councillor Cave, do you have a supplementary? Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, I do. Uh, thank you, Councillor King. Um, I hear what you say, but I wonder if the Cabinet member would be prepared to take the risk and uh, come around the rural vale, maybe to walk, run or cycle, so that you can have a first-hand experience of exactly what I'm referring to. I um I dare to suggest that I take a risk every time I go out um, on any road. Um, I think over the COVID lockdown period and the and the recovery, um, we have all witnessed some absolutely stupid behaviour by some drivers. I don't think it's restricted um, or limited to the rural vale. Um, and and in terms of coming out, I'm afraid I'm one of those people who's of an age where I need to be ever more mindful about how much I expose myself to um, infection. Um, so for the time being, I'll say no, thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Sure. Question number 11 from Councillor, uh, Councillor Griffiths for the Cabinet Member for Neighbourhood Services. Thank you, Councillor. Thank you, um, Madam Chair. Uh, the Will Tag Stage 2 yeah, yeah. Plus report for improvements to, trans improvements to transport to Denis Paris, including the consideration of a bypass, is due to be presented to Cabinet in November this year. Thank you very much. Have you got a supplementary? Uh, thank you, Cabinet Member, and thank you for your response. Um, just a quick question around, it's been a couple of months since the summer and the COVID, is there any kind of lessons learned that you could take away from the last couple of months just trying to collect the report and pushing it forward you could implement in the consultation or any period when it goes to cabinet to keep it going moving um i think the, the um, i think we have to accept there have been some delays um but i think the 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 main point is that we're trying to get the full facts and for various reasons various people don't seem to respond as quickly as they normally do and i, I i'm inclined to say that i'd rather get a late response that is accurate and correct than a quick one that is wrong thank you thank you councillor uh, question number 12 from councillor nugent finn to cabinet member for education and regeneration Thank you, Madam Mayor and Councillor Nugent Finn for, for your two questions. I'd certainly hope that supporting young people would be fundamental to all of us in, in this meeting today. And yes, I am happy to support this Kickstart initiative for 16 to 24 year olds. We're currently reviewing the scheme and the best way to structure this through the council. In addition, an officer working group consisting of human resources, economic development and the youth support teams are already assessing how best to support smaller businesses to take up the opportunity using the council as the umbrella organisation. Thank you, Councillor. Um, have you got a supplementary, Councillor Finn? I do, thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, the question was actually to the leader, uh, but thank you very much, Councillor Bennett, for, for answering. Um, I'm just wondering how this activity being promoted is going to look. Are we going to work with local businesses? Um, it, it cuts across, as you quite rightly mentioned, all of the divisions from the Care Leaser scheme to the YOS team, even schools and education. So how are we actually going to deliver and actively promote this, please? In my earlier answer, I actually said that officers are currently working on that. Um, but I think we have to recognise that this scheme isn't a cure-all for the challenges we face in the Vale of Glamorgan. And I am really grateful for the opportunity to outline the scale of that challenge. If we just look at 18 to 24-year-olds in the Vale of Glamorgan who are now in receipt of financial support and recorded as not in employment, this has grown significantly from 5.6% in March 2020 to 11.5% in August 2020. And that means a total 
of 1,075 of our young people aged 18 to 24 are now in receipt of financial support in the Vale of the Morgan. In reality, a scheme for just 350,000 young people across the whole of the UK for six months is not going to come close to dealing with the challenges facing us. And if the UK government's furlough scheme ends as planned in just over a month, we will likely see mass unemployment within our communities and wide scale business failure. So there will not be the placements available. What I can say is that while we'll work hard to make sure that any, or we will work hard to make sure that any scheme that we develop is much more than cheap labour to pull pints or flip burgers on a minimum wage of, you know, for a 16 year old of, of uh, £4.55 an hour. So I would also ask that while we work hard on putting this scheme together, you use any communication channels available to you to ensure the UK government doesn't pull the rug out from under our young people in October. Thank you, Councillor. Question 13, again, um, from Councillor Nugent Finn to uh, Cabinet Member Social Care and Health. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Councillor Nugent Finn, for your two questions. As you'll be aware, having attended the Healthy Living Social Care Scrutiny Committee on the 15th of September, they received a presentation regarding the Social Services Directorate's response to COVID-19, which included managing placement demand. Children and Young People Services have continued to prioritise the welfare of children, and acted to safeguard children in all circumstances. They have uh, continued to act in all circumstances. This has included maximising our in-house placement availability, working creatively to do so, and seeking placements in the independent sector where in-house capacity hasn't allowed. We've also worked with wider families to support them in caring for children where they haven't been able to remain, remain with their parents, providing additional support as necessary. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Nugent Finn, do you have a supplementary on this? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I do, yes. This was more, uh, uh, thank you very much for your, for your uh, response, Councillor Gray. This was more of a specific than we discussed in, in the uh, committee. So what I was wondering was, um, do we have we, as a result of uh, the implementation of some of the, um, the, the, the new ways of working and looking after and supporting our most vulnerable children at a critical uh, time. Do, have we have we created any more best practice? Um, have we um, created different procedures in which and how we, we we place these children? That's specifically what I wanted answered. Thank you. Okay, and and thank you for that supplementary. I recall that was the exact same question you asked officers in that meeting. Uh, they gave you an answer there, and I'll provide you a written answer to satisfy. Uh, the detail and maybe we can uh, bottom out what you're uh, what you're asking thank you thank you councillors moving on question 14 from councillor carroll to the leader <clears throat> thank you madam mayor thank you for the question and can i refer to the answer i give a question two i'd also refer you as i did then to the cabinet report of the 7th of september 2020 which includes details of the position with regards to the estimated costs of COVID-19 and how the authority is claiming these costs back from the Welsh Government by the hardship. I also refer you to the revenue reports that have been reported to each scrutiny committee in the last week and due to be completed this week. I specifically refer you to the lead scrutiny committee corporate performance resources on next Wednesday, this Wednesday coming of which you are a member. There is a full report on each. Thank you, Leader. Councillor Carroll, do you have a, a supplementary? Um, thank you for that, um, Madam Mayor, and I thank the Leader for his answer, in particular his reference to claiming costs back from Welsh Government. There have been a number of murmurings in the press over recent weeks about the possibility of quite significant council tax rises next year. Obviously, this would put incredible pressure on hardworking people across the Vale. So my question to the, to the leader is, will he take this opportunity to rule out an inflation-busting increase in next year's budget? 
with, with the greatest of respect, how can you ask me to do that? I have told you that us government have got a hardship fund. But we are claiming it back on a quarterly basis. We we are uh, claiming back what we what we what we're entitled to, and they also covered in the first three months the 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 um, rate support grant. We currently have a position whereby our council tax is lower than it was, and it's running at between 1.2 percent, which is just over a million pounds short so far. We're hoping that we can pick that up. And if we can, then we, we, we will be in the position where we can look at our budgets. The difficulty that we currently have is that we're not sure what the budget is going to be, when it's going to come out, because it is going to come out later in this year. And so I can't give you any guarantee whether we will have a council to raise or otherwise. And we will have to see when we know more detail as it comes forward. They'll be sorry, but. I haven't got a crystal ball and neither of you. Thank you very much, Councillor. Moving on. Another question from Councillor Carroll to the Cabinet Member for Neighbourhood Services and Transport. Uh, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Thank you, Councillor. Um, it is hoped that the consideration will be given to this important issue in November this year and subject to that consideration, potential implementation in early 2021. Thank you. Do you have a supplementary, Councillor Carroll? Um, yeah, thank you, um, Madam Mayor. Um, the Cabinet Member and I were both present at Landock Community Council on Thursday, where concerns were raised about um, parking issues in various areas of Landock, including Penland Rise, Spencer Drive and Lewis Road. And there was a desire when the Council bring forward draft proposals for Landock, as set out in the policy, to include these areas as well. So my question is more of a plea, really, to the Cabinet member. Will he join me in pushing for these to be included? Um, I received the letter from the Community Council and I will um, respond to it. Um, but my concern remains, as I've explained at every opportunity I have, we ultimately need to win the public vote. If you, if you take on too big an area, um, I think there is a risk of not winning the public vote and then failing. And I would far rather introduce residential parking controls um, successfully and expand them than fail. Thank you, Councillor. Moving on, a question from Councillor Rowlands to Cabinet Member for Leisure, Arts and Culture. Thank you, Councillor Rowlands, for your question. Um, I can confirm that Legacy Leisure is currently implementing its service recovery plan. All sites are now open, but obviously usage is significantly down, given the restrictions on numbers, social distancing, and people not feeling comfortable enough to come outside yet. We are looking at uh, support measures to continue to support Legacy throughout its operation. Unfortunately, COVID-19 has had a very significant impact on Legacy, as with all other leisure sectors generally. We are, however, aware that due to their use of government's furlough scheme during the lockdown, the additional costs experienced by this council are significantly less than other councils using in-house trusts, where it can, in lots of cases, prove difficult to operate the furlough, to operate the furlough scheme. Thank you, Councillor. Do you have Thank a supplementary, Councillor Rowland? Yes, Madam Mayor. Uh, yes, Madam Mayor. Just a brief to the member. member. How much has it cost the council so far? So far? Oh, well, you, Madam Mayor, I didn't hear you. No, I didn't hear you. I didn't hear you. I said, how much? I said, how much? Has it cost? Has it cost? Has it the council so far? Council so far. In relation to the financial support that we've given to Legacy. We've given to Legacy. Allowing for the time delay that currently is time delay that currently is operating. I'm not prepared to discuss I'm that in the meeting with you, Councillor Rowland, Mr. Councillor Rowland. But I will come back to you in writing. Thank you, Councillor Rowland. Moving on, Councillor Carroll. Thank you, 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 Councillor Carroll. Thank you,
With the greatest respect, with the greatest respect, I don't want to on my telephone, telephone, but this is just getting ridiculous. Just getting ridiculous. I will answer the question. I will answer the question. It does have to grab the relevance. In response to the COVID 19, the COVID 19 pandemic, pandemic, I'll give you a written answer. I'll give you a written answer. You seem to be having a lot of interference. A lot of interference. This is rubbish. This is rubbish. Can I ask who is that then? Ask who is that then? Can we move on? Can we we'll try. On. Um, we'll try. Um, Question 18 from Councillor Bain. Councillor Bain. The member for Neighbourhood Services and Neighbourhood Services and Transport. Sorry, I will try this, sorry, but there's so much to do. There's so much to do. The proposal within the LD within the LD and the purposes of the study is to fully study is to fully We were very short we were seeking views seeking views. We were very shortly be seeking views on the possible highway options which may be taken forward for detailed design and further consultation. Those options relate to potential improvements of the links from the M4 Junction 34 to Sycamore Cross, the A48, and follows previous studies and work relating to this corridor. We have, we're have. we going to risk a supplementary on this? Nothing's coming back. I'm sorry about the mayor, but I haven't heard the answer to my question. So how am I meant to answer supplementary? We want to I'm, I'm, I'm more I'm more than happy to try again, but the but the echo is so ghastly that I'm guessing we're all struggling to understand anything. Yeah, Any but my, mine was to the leader rather than to you, Councillor Kin. Uh, Councillor uh, Rowlands, the leader has uh, expressed that he will. Madam, 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 Madam Mayor, sorry to interrupt you. I'm, I'm happy to give him an answer, but this is just ridiculous because I'm not sure whether or not somebody is sabotaging this, but it is absolutely ludicrous. I think there's someone on the phone who was, who was not on mute and uh, called in the massive feedback. It's better now. I will, but, I will, but I will try and give him an answer to question 17. But I doubt whether or not you will hear it. In no, response I can hear it now. To the most. Give the interruption. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the council has re-engineered its network infrastructure to support mobile and home working, improve, improve information security, and increase internal and external bandwidth speeds by a factor of 10. But the problem is always is if people keep their mics on, it doesn't doesn't matter what good a system you have, it doesn't work. These upgrades have been fundamental in ensuring availability of the necessary bandwidth and technologies for remote meetings and collaborative working on the Council's network with over 700,000 direct and concurrent remote connections to the infrastructure daily. Members have been provided secure and stable methods to remotely connect the Council network allowing them to attend virtual meetings and access their emails and calendars from any location using council hardware whilst ensuring their data remains safe. As part of this program of work, members' tablets and laptops were recalled and upgraded to ensure all functionality was available. All system updates were installed and all security protocols were in place on the devices. 
This program will also ensure that these devices were staged in readiness for the next phase of the Council's Microsoft 365 roadmap. Members will need to continue to use their ICT equipment to ensure that software is regularly updated, in other words, make sure you turn it on, to ensure that the devices are compliant from a cabinet office public service network, known as PSN, perspective and can take advantage of any changes or new functionality being rolled out centrally. In response to the COVID-19 pandemic, the Council has invested over £250,000 in re-engineering its network infra networking infrastructure. I hope you heard that. Thank you, Leader. Councillor Rowland, do you want a supplementary on that? Yes, Madam Mayor. Uh, can I thank the leader uh, for that uh, response? Um, as the leader is aware, the regulations for remote meetings came in on the 21st of uh, April this year. The first meeting that was available for Morgan was July of this year. There's been 16 meetings since then, carried out virtually. Why has it taken the council nearly six months to sort out members' IT equipment? Why has the Vale of the House not been able to sort out virtual meetings for more than 21 members on screen? We've had enough time to plan this. Even town and community council are doing better than us. Maybe you should reconsider the current use of this platform and use a different one, like Office 365, that may help the situation. And also maybe plan ahead. Uh, like Councillor Hollins, could you ask, ask your question, please? What's the question, please? The answer, the answer, that. The, I, I yeah, the answer, the answer, I'll give so, an answer, I'll, you know, I'll, give an, I'll give an answer now. In answer, in answer to your question, I agree with you that I don't like this platform. I usually use Teams, which is stable and secure, and I wish we were using it and will be using it as from November. In terms of the, the, um, the, 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 the rollout, the, the, a lot of, a lot of the, a lot of the members' equipment needed updating. There was a lot of people who weren't actually going on the iPads either, and therefore they weren't having the updates. Uh, I accept it is taking a little longer than necessary, that, but unfortunately we are where we are. We are investing in, in the platform and there will be a change, particularly in terms of using Teams in November. Um, I can't give you any more answers than that at the moment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Leader. And finally, a question from Councillor Bailey, or the uh, Cabinet Member for Neighbourhood Services. I think you did try and answer this earlier on, Councillor. If you'd like to uh, finish your I, statement, we'll uh, see where we can go from there. Well, can, can I, can I, I dare ask uh, Councillor Bailey if he got my initial answer and if he wants to go straight to his, his supplementary? I'm afraid I didn't hear it. I was having troubles here in the meeting at that point. So sorry to make you read it out again. <laughs> no problem. I was, I was having the greatest difficulty hearing myself. Um, it is a proposal within the LDP, and the purpose of the studies is to fully assess that feasibility. We will very shortly be seeking views on the possible highway options, which may be taken forward for a detailed design and further consultation. Those options relate to potential improvements of links from the M4, Junction 34 to Sycamore Cross at the A48, and follow previous studies and work relating to this corridor. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, Councillor Bailey, have you got a supplementary on that? I'm not sure if the leader is looking to get in on addition to this answer or whether he's questioning his IT access. I'm not sure, but I do have a supplementary. Happy to wait and see what Neil's looking to say, though. No, I was I was sorry. I, I thought I was I thought he was answering the supplementary. Um, I just wanted to ask a question of the mayor after, before we finish the, the meeting, because I think somebody has got their tablet and their phone on. And I think that's what's causing the issue. There is somebody using two two devices next to each other. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but ICT will only work if people use it properly. And all of a sudden it's gone a bit quieter. There we Could are. There if you're on your phone and your laptop. Same room. Councillor Bailey, we'd like to ask you a supplementary now. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Cabinet Member. Um, 
really, it's just to ask, I mean, given the financial pressures faced by the council, obviously the UK government and the Welsh government as well, um, would you agree with me that it would be perhaps a more sensible approach to refocus the council's priorities, uh, scrap the unwanted and we would argue unnecessary A48 M4 link road plans and instead just look at upgrading the existing infrastructure whilst making uh, more progress and putting more emphasis on the much needed and locally wanted Dinas Paris bypass? Um, well, one of the reasons for the delay was we took um, your suggestion to look at the improvements to the online um, route um, and therefore have, have done some work. My greater concern is for the planning blight. Um, and I think, I think if we can, if we can, can if we can pr conclude this bit, we may, we may at least help um, some of the residents. Thank you very much, Councillor. And if there's no more question, no more um, questions, we have any, we've no questions from members of the public. I have nothing to add. There's nothing I did. I uh, declared decide is urgent. And I've got nothing under part two. So with that, I end this meeting. And it's been an experience. I can say very steep learning curve all round. And um, I thank you all for attending. Thank can you. I thank you, Ma can I thank you, Madam Mayor, for the way you've handled the meeting? Um, and I'm not sure whether or not um, I did mention the fact that somebody might have a phone and a computer together. It could be that people are, are in the same room together. Or too close to each other, cause, and that's causing the issue. Yeah. So perhaps, we, perhaps members could could reflect on where they're sitting, what they're using, because otherwise, right. we, we're we're never gonna we're never gonna have a proper meeting.